Well, welcome as we come together to celebrate our fourth midweek Lent service. Today, our topic is free to breathe. And so let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. God, you are with us in every moment and season. Through your love and grace we are free to breathe. Give us faith this day to rest in your love, given through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today I'm presenting I'm Free to Breathe. When Pastor Dirk first asked me to do this, I thought it was about simply breathing as I learned to do in nursing school, taking air in and out, or simply relaxing and listening to God. Then I thought about freedom and what it means to be free. To me, this means freedom because of skin color, religious views, physical ability, age, sexual orientation, and political beliefs. In my heart, I want to model my life the way Jesus lived, by including everyone. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, the tax collector and the prostitute will enter the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. What I learned from what Jesus said, I don't want to include everyone for the sake of inclusion. I want to include them for the purpose of loving them. I live with several health issues. I still embrace the grace and joy of my life with caring for others, my garden that I love, enjoying pets, and sewing for myself and various charities in the state fair. The tough things in my life are balanced with the grace God gives me in joy. What I know about Jesus is that he struggled. He argued. He protested. He was compassionate. He was a teacher and he was kind, and mostly he was kind. In the season of Lent, I want to learn to be mostly kind. In this pandemic, I have found my patience being stretched, and I find it necessary to do some deep breathing and relax and breathe and think more kind thoughts. Free to breathe. Now, I don't know about you, but after living in a world where we have an airborne virus running rampant, and the murder of George Floyd last summer, where we heard, I can't breathe. I have found myself focusing a lot more on what it means to be free to breathe and what it means just to breathe. And I've focused a lot more on breath in the last year than I normally do. In my acting training in college, we were taught that when you are getting into a character for a show, to strip everything else away, don't think about what you have to do on stage, don't think about what you have to say, just focus on breathing. Get back to that core of what it means to be a human, focus on your breath, and then once you've sat with that for a while, slowly add everything back in. Now, I haven't been in any shows recently or done any acting recently, but I found that I've been using this exercise more and more, especially in the last year. When life, when everything around us just gets to be so overwhelming to just take a step back and just breathe. I think about our creation story where we hear God breathe life into Adam and Eve. We hear that, you know, not only is breathing a fundamental part of who we are as humans, but it's the beginning of our creation story as a species, as God's people, God breathed life into Adam. And when we are free to breathe, we are free to do everything else that we have to do, and that we get to do, to help share God's love in the world. Our first reading comes from the second chapter of Genesis. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. 
but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Psalm 150. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud, clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Yes, everyone, praise the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now in the beginning... Creation began simply enough with God breathing over the waters and declaring, let there be light. Then, soon after, God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being, a living being now free and capable of breathing on his own. Now, I don't know about you. But for the most part, I take breathing for granted, as it's not something I've really spent a whole lot of time thinking about over the course of my life. And yet, I know that for many people, it is something they are concerned about on a daily basis. I just walk into any care center around town and you will see numerous people either in bed hook up, hooked up to an oxygen tank or else dragging around a portable air container that allows them to breathe. Allows them to not only to breathe, but to live. And I think we all realize that if we can't breathe, we will soon die and that there's just no getting around this. So why then do some people feel the need to tempt this core tenant of life by placing themselves purposely in a position of vulnerability. I'm thinking about people like Harry Houdini, who over and over again performed stunts that forced him to hold his breath beyond what was safe, just to add an extra layer of danger to his great escapes. And while Houdini's death was not a direct result of not being able to hold his breath, it still boggles my mind why he did what he did for so long in the first place. Then on the other hand, there are people who don't put their own breathing on the line, but rather seem to have no qualms about going out of their way to endanger the lives of others. As we all know, right now Minneapolis is at the epicenter of the world's attention as the case against former officer Chauvin gets underway in the death of George Floyd. Now who knows how this case will play itself out. But I think it is safe to say that anyone who has seen the video of George Floyd lying in that street gasping for breath for over eight minutes while crying out to officers that he could not breathe feels that this incident could have been handled differently. Handled differently, regardless of what George Floyd may have done. Now, yes, people need to be held accountable for their actions. But at the same time, I don't think any of us really believe that justice was actually served on that day last May. Because on that day, George Floyd had his freedom denied, his freedom to breathe. And seeing Floyd struggle while these four officers seem so nonchalant only adds to the injustice of it all. No wonder there was such an outrage. 
and not just outrage here in Minneapolis, but across the country and even the globe. Because down deep, we can all probably place ourselves in Floyd's position. Maybe not as a black man, but certainly as someone who not only can sympathize, but also empathize, really feeling what he must have been going through as he gasped for breath and cried for help. Now it is definitely a shame what happened to George Floyd, as no one should have their right and freedom to breathe taken away from them for any reason. Because we must always remember that it was God who breathed life into us so that we might live. To live in harmony with one another and also to come together in worship and praise for the one who gave us this gift of life in the first place. Now this past year has been tough on so many of us. We've been sequestered away from friends and family. Our work and school and retirement routines have been turned upside down. And I've even heard many people express this time as suffocating. It's as if we've been denied the freedom to breathe and live fully. But things are starting to change. Many of us have had one or both of our vaccine shots. The governor has begun loosening many restrictions and ever so slowly we are beginning to breathe in normalcy once again. And for this, we should give thanks. Thanks for the hard work of our elected officials. Thanks for the men and women on the front lines who worked and continue to work so tirelessly, both searching for a cure and caring for the sick. And thanks to God. Thanks to your God who created you in the first place, cared for you enough by entering into the world as Jesus, and continues, continues to sustain you through the power of the Spirit, working in and through people just like you. So today, feel free to take a deep breath and then feel free to share a prayer of thanks to share a prayer of thanks and maybe even to sing out a song of praise. Yes, let everything and everyone that breathes praise the Lord, not just today, but every day. For the Lord has done wondrous things for you in the past and continues to share the wondrous love of unconditional grace again and again with you simply because simply because God does not turn away from anyone God breathed life into. Anyone God has created, cared for, and has compassion upon. And that includes you. You and everyone else who were born free. Born free to breathe. Amen. The breath of God's Spirit is constantly blowing in the lives of believers. It's continually flowing. It's powerful, mighty. It's character changing in the lives of believers. It's behavior alternating. The breath of God's Spirit is constantly reforming in the minds of believers. It's attitude transforming. 
it's quick and it's strong and it's deep and penetrating in the hearts of believers it's profound and regulating the breath of god's spirit blows as it pleases for it's the very breath of god that governs the breezes the breath of god's spirit passes through the masses as baptismal water gently splashes the newly born while still being as sharp as a rose's thorn. So next time that you feel of sin, just take a breath with God and feel that breath within. At this time, I invite you to join me in praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.